What's up everyone? It's your main man here, Secondhand Hunter, uh, here for a video review for you of the movie The Giant Gila Monster. The G Giant Gila Monster. Hey YouTube, it's uh, your main man here, uh, Secondhand Hunter. Okay, so this movie here was, is basically like a cheesy horror uh, monster type movie from uh, the 50s. Um, 50s style and everything like that. Uh, it was kind of cool seeing um, basically um, the different type of um, culture from then and now. Um, the plot of the movie is basically there's this giant uh, lizard that's um oh let me read the back of it a small town in texas finds itself under attack from a hungry 50 foot long gila monster no longer content to forge in the desert the giant lizard begins to chomp on motorists and train passengers before descending upon the town itself only a quick thinking teenager can save the town from being wiped out. That's basically what it says on the back. Well, that is what it says on the back. Um, so, in the movie, there's, well, like, a couple main characters. The sheriff, um, the mechanic slash tow truck driver, uh, and his gang and the town drunk um uh, which he only was part of it for like uh maybe two or three parts in the movie or something like that but um and i'm sorry but i really don't remember any of the characters names in the movie so i'm just gonna refer them to what i just uh said so um basically the movie starts off <coughs> where this couple, which I actually remember their names, Pat and Liz, they're on um, some date or something like that. Um, Lover's Corner or something, whatever the heck they called it back in the 50s. And they're doing their thing. Um, this, the Gila monster pops out from the corner, which basically looks like a normal lizard with the camera super zoomed in on it and everything like that. I mean, anything would look super sized if you put the camera super close to anything else. <laughs> so they got all scared and everything, and then the monster knocks their car off of, uh, it was like a cliff or something like that. So then that sets the plot for the movie, basically. Um, the sheriff gets word of the people, the couple not showing up that night and everything, and then he goes and questions the mechanic if he's seen them or whatnot else and he's like I haven't seen them but last night we were supposed to go to the drive-in theater with them and everything like that and they were they never showed up so we we're kind of wondering what was going on with that there and throughout the movie um, sheriff gets a new patrol car and the mechanic was like you know I can soup that thing up for you and slingshot it so you can catch anyone in these parts of the town and everything like that this weird stuff like that and um, one part where there was a crash and the sheriff called the tow truck slash mechanic dude out to the crash area or actually no um, he got on, they called it like a party line or something like that, but when the sheriff called, or when someone else called the sheriff, then it rung the phone in the mechanic's 
garage or something like that so then he listened in heard that there was a crash and everything so then he s raced out to the where the crash was and um, basically how they described it was the car was moving along and then push got pushed aside and everything like that uh, so the tire tracks were just like vertical or something like that but um, one thing during the part of the crash and everything the sheriff was basically lecturing the tow truck driver haven't I told you to change your headlight before and everything like that he's like uh, well one of them works and da 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 and, um, sheriff's asking him why he didn't get the headlight fixed yet not like that he said uh, it was either his daughter or his um, sister but she had to get braces on her legs and stuff like that. I had an unexpected expense, basically. It's that kind of like a um, close community type thing. Uh, the sheriff was like, "You see those headlights on that car right there? I think they'd look nicely on your vehicle, and the insurance company won't miss it at all." So it's just like, what the heck? You know, what kind of sheriff would actually do something like that? I guess a sheriff from the 50s or something like that. And then there's another part in the um, movie where another vehicle went into the ditch because of the Gila monster and the tow truck driver towed it back to his garage and everything like that and ended up swapping out the tires that were on that one for his own vehicle and then the sheriff confronted him about that. He's like, so how'd those tires get on your vehicle and everything? They look like the ones that were on that car that was in the ditch and he's just like, Oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so it's just, Sheriff's just like, basically like, oh, don't worry about it. It's just like, oh my gosh. So, all in all, it was actually a really entertaining movie. Um, the one part I thought was um, interesting, um, the Sheriff, dude, he was like bizarre. Because when he was going in... Um, interviewing basically everyone around town about the couple that went up missing um, he went to the the lady's parents house that turned up missing the lady that turned up missing he went to their her parents house and afterwards where you first meet the town drunk um, the town drunk pulls up in behind the um, sheriff's patrol car and he was all like good morning sheriff and the sheriff looks at him let me smell your breath Smells his breath, turns out fine. And right after the sheriff goes back to his patrol car, the town drunk pulls out a beer and then drinks it and everything. It's just like, seriously? You gonna do that? It's like nothing like how it is these type of days. And um, towards the end of the movie, um, the town drunk's driving his car and everything like that. And he, there's the train tracks right here, and he's right there. So he hears the train coming. He's like, okay, let's race for it. And then he starts speeding up, and then the road crosses over the train track. So then he like, pl basically plays chicken with the train. Um, the train goes over this um, bridge type thing. And as the train's going over the bridge, the Gila monster's going underneath and knocks out all the support beams. And the train just goes, kapow, falls off and everything later on the sheriff was questioning the town drunk about um, what he was doing that day during that time and everything and what he was doing why he was next to the train track and this and that and basically got in trouble for uh, drinking and driving and the sheriff said give me your keys so he handed over his keys and said okay go lock yourself up they're in the uh, um, downtown or the sheriff's office and everything like that um, basically as he was the town drunk was walking away the sheriff grabbed the booze from his back pocket and then the town drunk went and locked himself up and then sheriff smells it and he's like oh bad, uh, bad alcohol or something like that but um the movie was entertaining um on the back it said it's uh, only 53 minutes long but from my dvd player after it finished it said uh, 113 minutes long so um, I think I'm gonna go with that there but it, yeah, a little over an hour a little about an hour and a half long about give or take a little bit but um, pretty entertaining um, 
then I also towards the end of the movie um, the town was having this um, party type thing or something like that and the gill monster starts tearing apart the barn that they're in and everyone's like ah! funny thing is how they actually ended up killing the gill monster was the sheriff started shooting at the gill monster right there as it was tearing into the barn and took like 20 shots or something like that and the gill monster ended up running away and sheriff's like oh I'm gonna get with the state troopers and we're gonna pump as much lead in this thing as we can to kill it and that's when the um, tow truck driver um, said I'm gonna take care of this as well so then he ran back to his garage and he ended up getting nitrile and glycerin can you believe that and he was speeding down to where the gill monster went back to where the train crashed and everything like that and he was going over the bumps and everything and he had his girlfriend in the car and he's like make sure you hang on to those you don't want those bumping into each other and then all this exploding and everything uh, it's just like dude seriously you're gonna say that carrying nitroglycerin speeding going all over these bumps off road and everything you're gonna tell your girlfriend make sure those don't bump into each other that's not gonna be safe if it does so it's just like that's not that's not bright and um, at the very end he ends up running his hot rod right into the gill monster and he jumps out at the last moment safe and sound go figure the car explodes and nitroglycerin and then kills the monster and sheriff's just like good job basically um yeah so that is my review on the giant gill monster uh it was really entertaining it's a black and white movie so anybody that don't like black and white type movies this probably won't be your thing but um yeah it's a it's a great cheese ball movie from the 1950s so um i really enjoyed it um thanks for watching you guys rate comment subscribe do all that good stuff and i'll catch you guys next time see you later